Hello, everyone. Uh, very exciting to have so many of you here to talk about Wikidata and how it can help enable more equitable and validated generative AI. I'm Lydia. I'm the portfolio lead for Wikidata, and I'm here with. I'm Jonathan, the CTO of Wikimedia. And uh, I will start with some what is Wikidata even? Um, so you have an intro, and then Jonathan will show you cool stuff. So first of all, um, for those of you who don't know Wikidata yet, uh, it's uh, one of uh, the Wikimedia projects. It's a sister project of Wikipedia. Uh, that is all about data. And the data from Wikidata is used in a lot of technology that you are using every day without maybe even realizing that it's coming from Wikidata, like your digital personal assistant on your phone. Um, the data in Wikidata is available under CC0, so anyone can do with it whatever they want. Um, and it's created by a community um, with the help of machines and also for human and machines. Wikidata is highly multilingual, um, so it's one of the values of Wikimedia that we uh, provide the knowledge that we have to as many people as possible in the language they speak. Um, it's a very collaborative project, so anyone can uh, come and edit Wikidata. And last but not least, it's a free and open knowledge graph. Um, now, not all of you might be familiar with the concept of a knowledge graph, so I will give you a short example. Um, Wikidata, for example, has, a, has an entry for Maya Angelou, um, and we know a bunch of stuff about her um, by connecting her to other things. So for example, uh, we know that her place of birth was uh, St. Louis, um, that she's a human, um, and that she received some award, which again are things in the graph um, that are connected to other things then. So for example, St. Louis would be connected to other things like um, what, uh, who is the mayor of uh, St. Louis, how many inhabitants uh, does St. Louis have, and stuff like that. That builds up a huge, really huge graph with general knowledge about the world that is useful, um, like you find it in Wikipedia today already. So now, what makes Wikidata a bit of a special knowledge graph? Um, if you already know knowledge graphs, uh, Wikidata is a bit different. Um, first of all, anyone can contribute, including you. You can go and edit Wikidata today um, and contribute additional knowledge to it, additional data to it. Wikidata is also trying to model the world in a bit more nuanced way than um, you're usually used to, um, and it's built around the concept of verifiability. So for example, if there are um, legitimate different points of view about, let's say, some political territory, what it belongs to, and so on. We try to um, collect all of that, uh, all of those views, and put them in context with uh, references to sources that claim that, to uh, reliable sources that claim that. Um, <clears throat> as I was already saying earlier, Wikidata is very multilingual, so all the data we have, you can get it uh, access to it in um, a few hundred languages, which uh, we find very valuable. And last but not least, it is highly interconnected. So it is highly connected internally within the graph, but it's also uh, very connected to the other Wikimedia projects and specifically Wikipedia. So if you want to understand how the different Wikipedia articles, for example, relate to each other, Wikidata is a super helpful uh, source of information for that. And not only that, it's also connected to a ton of resources on the internet, um, like uh, MDB, the French National Library, um, UNESCO's uh, World Heritage Database, Reddit, you name it, we probably have a connection to it. So if you're, for example, looking for the IMDB entry for a famous actor, you can find it connected to their social media account, to their Facebook page, whatever, we probably have it and Wikidata is a, is a great hub to get to all those places on the web. 
and uh, which makes Wikimedia a bit uh, special at the heart of all of this are people, right, who contribute every day to making this knowledge graph and everything around it available to you. Lovely people. So now, I was already hinting earlier, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of technology out there using Wikidata's data already that you might know or not know about. Um, here are just some examples. <clears throat> um, some lesser known ones, uh, the Open Art Browser, for example, is a beautiful tool that lets you explore um, visual art across time um, in different museums and so on. Um, and right next to it uh, is, an, is a mobile phone app that was developed for one of the elections in Germany um, two years ago, which is about you walking around in the city, finding an election campaign poster, you scan it and it will show you um, how that person uh, voted in the past and other information about them, for example. So there are a lot of different ways how you can uh, use that data. Um, now, not all the data you might have um, is maybe suitable to be on Wikidata itself, or maybe you want to have your own knowledge graph because you want to model data in your particular way. Um, we also released the software that is underlying Wikidata called Wikibase as free software. Um, it's open source, anyone can run their own version of Wikidata, so to say either on their own hardware or use the software as a service we provide called Wikibase Cloud. And um, then do all the things Jonathan will talk about, either with Wikidata itself so. or with their own knowledge. Jonathan. Good. So um, Wikidata has been around for a couple, about now 12 years. and. Um, it powers a lot of really great web apps and uh, mobile apps and other database interfaces, but it wasn't quite being tapped into by the machine learning community, especially open source machine learning community. And with the large language models being released for public consumption, we realized that we had a wealth of information which we could get out to the people to use to improve the quality of the information ecosystem. And so we wanted to do this. In fact, we started um, really diving into this project at the San Jose AI.dev conference. It was pretty great to see how the collaborations worked out well. Um, but we want people to be able to freely access the um, Wikidata's data, but in a vectorized formatting with an embedding. We want to uh, integrate that embedding into our own search APIs. And then we want mostly for the inf for, uh, information to improve the quality of of information out there, particularly focusing this at this point on large language models. So of course, we all, large language models have two major issues with them. The, the, the data sets are outdated about the, po the point with which the model's released. It's, it's a static in, uh, interest. And then the limited context, so you can only get a couple thousand, say 8,000 or 16,000. I know there's some with a million, but the predominant case, case sets is a couple thousand. And so we decided we could, uh, we already had a method for getting our information out to uh, people to use and access and compile, but we wanted to make it more accessible in, in the right format that people who build large language models or people who build applications on top of them, I'm sure you've heard of retrieval augmented generation, um, to, to be able to use our data within them. Uh, in particular, we built a, um, as a prototype, a graph rag, and this is on, this is not released yet, uh, but basically with the uh, wiki data you would use the vector embeddings uh, to then scan through the plethora of its about 20 billion types of statements or in different chunk settings, a couple hundred million um, paragraphs. And so um, you go through there and you find it and then from there, once you get the information close to what you want to look for, you can then uh, probe the graph itself and create out of that uh, more contextual information that is targeted towards your answer. So when you're doing such a Q&A, you want to make sure that um, when you, we looked up the uh, capital of France and just to see if, it, if, the, if the code was working, and it said London. 
which was apparently true for a year. But um, the point is that the graph allows you to have more expansive and depth information, um, but it also has information in context. So it's been validated by being linked, being connected to other systems. So it's not just returning what the string in the database gives you, but also the graph links and other nodes being connected to it. Um, just in case if you were, um, this is a diagram of a RAG system. Uh, particularly, we are working with uh, Gina.ai, who is a Berlin-based open, they provide a lot of open source and open models on, on both Hugging Face and their own services. Um, they also provide a couple million tokens for experimentation on their website. Uh, and they are an embedding company. They've been at this for about four years. They work in multilingual operations. Uh, and um, they're very helpful and collaborative, so they helped us build uh, what well, we're using their existing embeddings, and then we're going to be working with each other over the next year to build specifically a multilingual embedding for Wikidata, because the Wikidata's um, text is in, a, is in a, a format which makes sense to a graph, but not always to a person. We're also collaborating uh, with uh, Datastax, who's uh, providing us with an experimental uh, Astra DB for the vector database itself. That's up here on the left. And this has been a very benefit that the two collaborations have been incredibly helpful, where we now have a better grasp of what we can do, what we need to do, and how to make it the most effective. So I just wanted to say thank you for their collaborations. In fact, I, we met Datastacks at the last uh, Linux Gen AI Commons, uh, um, the AI.dev workshop. Um, and so the, I see here on the left-hand side the, the vector database, which is where all the embedding comes from. And that's, that's the, if you've heard of vector uh, stores before, that's where it is. And as um, Lydia was mentioning, this we're working on right now is getting our tens of billions of, of statements, edge, edge, node, edge, uh, sorry, node, edge, node um, triples into the vector database. But if you have um, the pipelines all open source and freely available, all the code is, is ex, um, accessible on our GitHub, uses a Docker so you don't have to configure your system that much. And so you can then take this and use your own wiki base uh, um, if you install it yourself, or you can use your own, uh, we, we can provide you with, a, with a, a knowledge graph on our wiki based cloud service. And you just have to change the link for which, what's your, your um, API endpoint from the wiki data to your individual wiki base, and pretty much everything else should work as, as expected. As retrieval algorithms go, uh, the user inputs a query upper left, it then gets embedded, and that embedding gets, uh, embedded query gets compared to the vector database, which outputs, you'll see here, will output the text that's stored in the vector database, but it also outputs the IDs. And that's where our existing um, just example graph rag algorithm then goes and uses their, our pretty new REST API, grabs, all, grabs the information off of the REST API, and uses that instead uh, to compile the um, actual question and answer system. So it takes the maybe a few thousand statements off of the JSONs and turns them into a different locally stored vector database, just a couple, a couple thousand, and then that's where it gets the final answers from. So it does a multi-step process where it, it looks through the entirety of Wikidata vectorized, and then it uh, takes the IDs, which are the most similar, and grabs the, the, the link information from that, the actual co con context and really deep, um, complete sets of information about the, those particular IDs, like the person's name, or the, lo the location, or the country, or whatever it is you're looking for. And if you're familiar with the RAG system, next you plug in that information as added updated context into the large language models, and it outputs a result. So we are not quite really focusing on the RAG part. We're, foc we're, we're providing it, but really our efforts go into embedding the actual data itself. What we care about is that you have access to Wikidata's data, because we believe that Wikidata's data, and have shown in other ex experiments, um, is able to improve the quality of not just large language models, but pretty much understanding of people on the internet. So here's kind of what the data would look like. On the upper left, you just have the metadata. You don't actually have to really think about that too much, but one of the options is that we have on the right-hand side ways to control for how deep do you want to go, how much quality do you want the information to have, if it's fresh or if it's highly cited. Um, uh, number of descriptions also equals number of languages, so how universally or globally um, represented is it? And then, so th uh, and then 
Otherwise, you would get back a stack of data like this, which is very similar to what a wikidata.org website looks like. I kept all the blue links in there to show you that not only with any one of our chunks do you get a bunch of strings and text, you also get the links to all the data it comes with, so you can find the citation, find the reference, understand the background context of what is this doing, what does it mean. So in addition to the information you were looking for, you can also have your pipeline pull back and access all kinds of other information surrounding it, and that's where the linking uh, of the in the linked open data comes from. Um, one thing that we thought was pretty cool is that Wikidata, you can, there's already existing algorithms, one of which we know about is called Reasonator, um, where you can take a stack of Wikidata text and turn it into a useful paragraph. And so what we came up with recently was that um, you can use Wikidata bytes without a large language model to answer questions. You don't need the large language model itself. Of course, it may phrase it better, may have more context, larger, larger output, but, um, but if we know that humans and AI partnerships can improve their works, I, w it did, I did find a research paper that said, but not performance, just you know, ability to make decisions. We feel that having humans with, obviously we care about Wikidata, but knowledge graphs in the AI have a very good way of understanding context and depth and scope, um, as well as speed and processing and ability to integrate. Um, and so far as my philosophy goes, it's only uh, humans who can take that information and deduce from it. But we now have a fun live demo. Let's see if it works. But um, so the, yeah, the effect is, like I said, we're working with these companies. So I'm going to show you. This is on my laptop with the Docker deployed. It's on a CPU, so it's a little bit slow. But, um, but effectively speaking, um, this is my favorite query. And I know it works, so that's why I'd use it. Um, so, if we're asking, you know, a knowledge graph and a large language model, which can't, in my philosophy, that cannot reason what is the meaning of life. And our real direction, again, is to get the information to the world. It's not to answer the questions, but this does do that both. And so right now, it's, it's already um, searched the vector database. That was pretty fast. Then it goes and grabs all of the JSONs off of the REST API and says, like, you know, and, and then searches through all of them. Uh, hopefully it's cooking my CPUs, so it's actually doing multiprocessing correctly, but I didn't check today. And then eventually it will output a, there you go, a list of um, links to uh, other, to where you can get b more information. So this is where you can pull in all the other information we talked about before. Each of these links, if I'm lucky, will work. <laughs> And so here's what Wikidata works, looks like. And so it says, you ask, what's the meaning of life? It says, the meaning of life is a spiritual question concerning the, and philosophical, the significance of living existence in general. And so for us, it's about the smart search. It's about the vector search embedding with, uh, combining with our elastic search. And in this case, also working with our REST API in the background. But you can then, of course, take that and create an actual uh, solution itself. And then if just, you know, each one of these, just for, user interface can provide with you a short description of what the link means so you can go back and check it out for yourself. But for us, again, that this is just a kind of a toy to show you what you can do on your own. What we care about is that you have the information out there. So where are we at? Um, back in December 23, when we, we first created this, this uh, concept and presentation, for we said we, we, our presentation was we need help. And uh, people came and said, sure, I'll, I'll work on this, um, particularly against the data stacks, which led us to Gina. We also had some other meetings with people that didn't continue, but we still appreciate their time. And so it's pretty interesting now that roughly six months later, the English version, because I'm American, therefore I know how to work it out, but um, is pretty well prototyped. I will say, if you want, we still need help with other languages. Wikidata represents close to 300 languages, and how to take knowledge graph and turn it into string is not easy in all the in any language. But the ones I can only do the like, we have to have our community out there working on is with us to help us do that, to make, to make tuples and turn them into strings so that the vectorization process is effective. Um, we're, again, working with Gina.ai in Berlin, very, very helpful collaborators to build a Wikidata embedding um, that will probably start actual com computation uh, sometime later this summer. 
um, the fine tuning of the open source large language models, which again was a proposal we, we, we put forth, uh, would not be happening yet very soon. But with everything that we've done, I wanted to say thank you to the Linux Foundation. We joined the official collaboration for the Gen AI Commons, which gave us wonderful access to people who really care, who really want to contribute really want to give back. Um, and so um, through them, we've met several other people to collaborate with. And um, just they, did, they didn't agree for me to list their names, so I'm not. But I just want to say thank you. It's really great to work with everybody here. What do we offer? We actually have um, um, a lot of the wiki data uh, internal knowledge. Of course, we try to put everything on the internet. We're very focused on fully open everything, open documentation, open source, open. We will be putting open models. We try out, we'll be working under the model openness framework from the Linux Foundation. But personal contact always helps a little bit. So we're happy to meet with people, talk about people, and, and help you through your. We have community managers and partner uh, partnership managers who will go out there and talk to individual organizations or people or groups um, who can then help understand like what is your use case. Um, and then, yep, that's all. Thank you very much. So again, Jonathan, Wikimedia Deutschland. Ludia, also Wikimedia Deutschland. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, we have about um, 10 minutes for questions. Right on target. Right on target. So yeah, let's start here. Or oh, do we have another mic? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Constantine. I'm with Gin Tonic AI. We're doing Web3 for AI development. So RAG is a very practical concept, but it's selective and it's not perfect compared to knowledge graphs. Is there a way for LLM to traverse the knowledge graph directly without mm -hmm. doing extracts from the knowledge graph? And then follow-up question is that, do you plan on building your own LLM so that we can use as developers super agents that would direct, like in, in a mixture of agent model, mixture of express model, direct certain queries directly to you for mm -hmm. fact base? Mm -hmm. Don't um, I would say, yes, it would be amazing if LLMs could directly um, access the knowledge graph. And there are efforts to try to figure out how to do this. I don't know any that actually already works. Do you? None that are released now, but people we're in contact with who are trying this out. It's actually uh, use the, the uh, text to Sparkle, basically, right? Or we call it Sparkle Query Generator, but it's not our work. Um, as far as, yeah, so the fine tuning part up here, the um, purple one, that was something along the lines of having an agent that can surf the knowledge graph itself. Um, and it would at some point have the exact organizational structure of the knowledge graph built into the training data set as well. That way, if you're looking for something, you can pull it out and knows, knows how Wikidata works. But I'm not sure how that would translate to other knowledge graphs. So I wasn't not sure what it would be a fully operating system, but we love if you use our data. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need you on the mic for the camera. Um, I, I was wondering, do you uh, are you exploring the, um, the the use of chatbots to collect contributions? L like, uh, for example, LinkedIn is mm. basically uh, asking anyone with some kind of knowledge to contribute, so they can build their own database of knowledge. Mm. And the way that uh, using chatbot to, to contribute and to answer specific questions um, might be a way to collect easy, in an easier way uh, more data uh, coming from actual humans. Lydia. All right. Um, so far, no. Um, among other reasons, because I don't think we can quite get to the um, level of accuracy that uh, our community wants, but it's something worth exploring at some point, I would say. I would uh, add that we don't just have the text itself. We would have references and links to other text and how that organizes. And there is a way to use large language models to generate knowledge graphs, but it doesn't give everything that Wikidata would want. We have other qualifiers that add quality. Yeah. Did you get the mic somebody else? So uh, next up here, but yeah, that's good. Yeah, 
Thank you so much for the uh, the great uh, presentation today. Um, I have a question about the uh, the embeddings model that you uh, you guys are using. I understand that China has a one million token uh, kind of free tier. Mm -hmm. no, Sorry, it does not. I was I was saying they're they're uh, eighty one ninety two. Yeah, yeah. So for context, you mean right? Right. But, yeah. But the, the the question I had was, did you consider using any um, open source embeddings model that anyone can run locally and then send to uh, to your API? Mm -hmm. Uh, it is running locally. It's on Hugging Face, the version V2. Is that what you mean? The Gina, Gina provides their model open source, um, and the, it's built off of like the Hugging Face mo um, large language models as well. Is that your question? Oh, it, essentially. So you don't have to use the, uh, the Gina API to, uh, Correct. to compute the embedding? Yes. Okay. But it's what kind of framework can you, do you use to, uh, to actually run it locally? Um, the Hugging Face Sentence Transformers is what I have right now, but I also have a Llama installed just in case for the large language models. So yeah, the, the embedding is through the Hugging Face Sentence Transformers and then the, the LLM, which gave you the paragraph at the bottom. Uh, that was from, um, uh, yeah, that, was, that was locally as well through Olama. Yeah, Olama doesn't, s okay. I haven't seen that actually supported the uh, Gina embeddings. So. No, no, not Olama with Gina. Olama with another, um, another multilingual uh, model called Stable LM2. Yeah. Hi. Um, <clears throat> thanks for the presentation first. Uh, I've used and contributed a bit also to Wikidata. Uh, I have a question um, about uh, the ontology behind Wikidata and whether you're planning to use LLMs to improve it or act on it. Um, and I think also in GraphRack, uh, you sometimes the LLM builds automatically higher level or aggregated um, understandings of the graph itself. And uh, I guess in Wikidata, you already have that part because it's concepts which have already been added. So I'm curious to learn how you, uh, how you look at these things. Let me start with some tiny. Um, Lydia has spent 12 years building Wikidata to what it is today. I came in the last two years and said, hey, I know how to do AI stuff. So that's, that's the separation here. Lydia is like, she's the Wikidata. Good. Um, so um, ontologies. So that's one of the things we are quite focused on improving um, together with the community. And one of the things that um, is happening now is that also people from the community are building experiments um, to work with large language models on improving the quality of Wikidata itself. So one uh, community member, for example, worked on uh, using a large language model to detect vandalism. So he would uh, send the change that someone did to a large language model and uh, ask it, like, should this be reverted or should this be kept, basically. Um, and that actually, like, it's it's getting somewhere. Um, and then another step to looking at ontologies, for example, I would say, why not? Yeah. And I mean, behind Wikidata today are about twelve thousand people, right? And we have uh, over one hundred ten million entities that we're describing. So it's a huge amount of work um, and support for this people, these contributors, is one of the big things uh, that, that we're doing and, and trying to improve. Mm. Yeah. All right, you have another question? Uh, thank you for the presentation. I think you have a very nice, ish, um, interesting problem with the languages. You are ending so many languages. So how are they handled maybe first in the graph? Is it the same node translated? What about the LLM? What Would you really build the, the whole embeddings for all the language? Or you do for one language, which is maybe the more, uh, you know, the more complete? And then when you ask, you translate and then in and out, uh, maybe to avoid embedding um, a lot of things for nothing. Maybe I can start with the first part, and then Jonathan can answer the second one. So um, every entity in Wikidata um, has language-independent data. And then uh, we have what we call labels, so you can view it in your language. So everyone is working on the same data, regardless of which language they speak in, in the graph. So indeed, yes. So the embedding is basically only as good as the model it's built on using to train it. 
And so um, if you've got the 100 languages, was it the, is that the common crawl data set with 101 languages, I think? Sorry. Um, and so those are the 100 languages that you can use for the embedding. And even those are not great in all of the languages. And so I, I mentioned things like, is it okay in Arabic, but, but how about Farsi or Pashto? And the, 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 the answer is it's actually mostly good with just Western Latin characters and the rest they can do the best they can. I will say, you know, Arabic's not that bad, but it does, it's definitely better in European character sets. Um, and so, none, so in one of the, in order to truly expand to all 300 languages, we would have to take a, a our own model and train it on all 300 languages, and we don't ourselves have enough data for that per language. There is a qualification for using translations, and that's some of our community already does this as well to get like understanding of how things are to connected to each other. But it's not in our plan right now to understand which direction to take. Right now, we're trying to get off the ground with what we can do, and then basically r around next year, because um, this is the prototypes coming together well enough, it's um, uh, coming together and then reaching out to the community for help, especially with those other languages. All right, we are at the end of our time. Thank you so much, everyone. If Thank you, you would like to discuss more with us, we will be outside and happy to chat more. Coffee time.